Here's an unusual question asking for a video on how to create conceptual paintings, uh, how to convert our thoughts and emotions into visual art. That's actually two questions. Conceptual art by itself is a category well, first of all, let me tell you what it is not. Conceptual art does not depend upon painting techniques. There are no painting techniques to learn. Uh, there is no such thing in conceptual art as a product that is important itself. Conceptual art is about ideas. The idea, according to the conceptual artist, Whatever you're looking at is not important, but the idea it evokes is important, or the idea that the artist, artist has is important. Now, if you want to find out more about conceptual art, uh, you can go to YouTube and simply search for conceptual art, and there are all kinds of videos on conceptual art. So you, get, you can really get a, a survey of it that way, but let me just go into why you cannot really do a conceptual painting from the point of view of a conceptual artist. Do you remember the duct tape banana that sold for $120,000? Yeah, there's a whole story behind that. You probably saw it in the news and you can certainly look it up. It's, this is met probably, perhaps, one of the most controver controversial of all the conceptual things that have been done because the question is, what idea does it evoke? What is it about? Or was it just a joke that the artist played on the public? And oftentimes, a conceptual art will be considered like that, depending on the point of view of the person that's looking at it. So let's look at maybe where, maybe where conceptual art began. Maybe it began with Marcel Duchamp when he <laughs> took a urinal put it on exhibit, and called it a fountain. Now, that may be a little bit far out in your thinking, but according to him and according to other people who consider this an art, a piece of art, that if you pull out something, anything, and exhibit it in whatever way you choose, the fact that you exhibited it makes it conceptual art that it's the idea and whatever idea it evokes. You can think about that one for a little while. Let's look at some one or two other ideas about what conceptual art might be or is. Now this one is a little bit more thoughtful. Uh, this is the artist Joseph Kassuth. The idea, he, a lot of his work involved photography, a real object and a definition. And his idea was which one is the chair in this case. We have a photograph of a chair, we have a real chair on display, and we have a dictionary definition of a chair. His idea for this particular piece is, is the definition of the chair the real chair? Is the chair the actual chair that we would sit in? Is that the real chair? Or is the photograph a real chair? Uh, I don't know if he asked this question, probably so. Is it the combination of all three and more? You see, the whole, thing, the whole idea of conceptual art is not the art, or what they call the art, not the piece itself, but it's the idea that it evokes or the experience that it evokes. So, what does that mean then uh, for someone who wants to produce a conceptual painting? It means that if you produce a conceptual painting, your painting is not the important thing, but the idea of what is behind the painting is what's important. Then that leads us to, it's Van Gogh's Sunflowers, conceptual art. Well, we need to expand that whole idea of conceptual, but if you're thinking about the category of conceptual art, we can't really expand that category into the process of painting and still have it rem remain in the category. Now, it is true that artists from centuries, over the centuries, have dealt with ideas. 
How do we know that Van Gogh's idea about the sunflowers, these sunflowers, in back, brilliant backlight, how do we know that his idea was not about the dead pods of the sunflowers themselves, but the bright, bright light that's shining behind them? That's an idea, and that's a conceptual idea. If you want to do conceptual art, then you must forget the techniques of painting, you forget learning the processes. Observation of nature has nothing to do with it. But you simply go find something that suggests something to you and you put it on exhibit and you give it a name. And that can be your conceptual art. Now there are some paintings that are exhibited that are called conceptual paintings. But then there's an argument about them. Are they really in that conceptual category? So. This person asked, how do you do a conceptual painting? If we're looking at this photograph here of the jonquil, we see the photograph of this jonquil is, has a lot of similarity with the painting of Van Gogh. You see, they both have bright yellow backgrounds. That's an idea. A bright yellow background might suggest something symbolic or it might suggest brilliant sunlight from behind. Uh, they both are about flowers. The, this is a different kind of flower than this. This is the jonquil. These are the sunflowers. So if it's just about flowers and about the idea of flowers, that could be the concept. Or they both are about shadow. This one, we can see the deep shadows here. We can see here that the sun, the, the, the pods of the sunflowers and the sunflowers themselves are in shadow. That would suggest light behind the shadow. You could even take it a step further and say what they are, how they are not similar. How they are not similar, this is about dead flowers, flowers that are losing their petals and they're dying. This is this flower is very much still alive, so we have a con we have contrast in ideas there. We could take it one step further, as far as the sunflower goes. We know that within all of these pods are thousands of seeds that can make new sunflowers, and so we kind of see a cycle of life represented here in Van Gogh's painting. We don't necessarily see that here, although we might know that there are seeds within these pods. What I'm trying to point out to you here is that we are always working with ideas. As artists, we're always working with ideas. Now, it doesn't, it's still an idea if your idea is simply just a copy, just to make a copy, just a painting of a jonquil, well then that is your idea to make the copy. Does that make that conceptual art? Not according to the definition of those who define conceptual art. If you want to take that even further, then you could focus on other aspects of it. You could focus on the sunlight of it. And you could emphasize in your painting the fact of the light, the yellow light, not the necessary flower itself. That's an idea about light and the brilliance and warmth of light. Or you, you can see you can take any subject that has a meaning to you. In fact, if you are approaching a subject because you're interested in it, because it has some kind of meaning for you, it doesn't have to be a deep meaning, but if it has some sort of meaning to you and some sort of interest, explore that interest visually. Explore the color of that interest. Explore the angles and the movement of that interest. In other words, explore those things that the visual language are, is about you will have a painting, as this person asked for, the person asked for how to convert our thoughts and emotions into visual art. You do that by responding to something that you're interested in, something that pulls you to it. And then if, you're, if, you're, if you know your techniques, you know your colors, you know the ways you can use those things to make them interpret for you that feeling that you have or that idea you have, then you have done just that. You have created something that converts your thoughts and your emotions into visual art. It is a concept, but it's not conceptual art. 
Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.